gathering in the morning, trying to understand new generation and new regeneration. And in that context, uh, this Alzheimer's disease is one of the neurodegenerative diseases in the world. And uh, this is Dr. Rafi Murasanu from University of uh, Medicine and Pharmacy from Romania. This is Dr. Lepente from Spain. In Asia, you and Dr. Tian, you know that they are here. We have another from Russian Academy of uh, Sciences, Dr. Ivo, and this is Dr. Patnaya from uh, India, Dr. Mosler from Austria, Dr. Mojari from Harvard Medical School, Dr. Kastelani from uh, University of Delhi and Bethesda, and Harun Ashwar is my wife. So we are very happy, and this is, uh, as you can see, we have uh, different type of collaborations. Obviously, whatever I am telling to you today is my personal con conclusion. It has nothing to do with any government policy that we are working on that. I started my career from India and in 1982, this was a doctoral thesis, Brunberg Barrier in Stress. We know that in neuroscience, everything depends on the brain and we also believe that brain is one of the fundamental organs to control everything from our emotions to physiological functions. Then, during this field, we have proposed some new ideas, why some people get Alzheimer, why some people get Parkinson's disease, apart from genetic factors. So, we may have some different types of <coughs> conditions imposed on our brain, for example, stress, that is one of the key factors in producing many kinds of ailments and disease. Now people are understanding this much more. So we have compiled this book from LCBR Academic Press in 2003 and telling that when we are supposed to be normal, our blood pressure <coughs> function is normal, except some uh, basic nutrition and excretion of uh, uh, metabolites. But all kinds of diseases that uh, involve brain have leaky from Alzheimer's or even minor stress to certain times. So therefore, the drug should be developed to restore these blood and barrier functions for health. And therefore, we are lucky that we have some drugs that can influence the blood and barrier permanently. I started my another career as a neuropathologist <coughs> together with Dr. Inge Olson from Uppsala University. He is one of the leading neuropathologists in the world and also become president of the International Neuropathological Society. I have my all neuropathological knowledge I owe to him. <coughs> then I met another German professor. He was director of Institute of Neuropathology in Berlin and he was electron microscopist of the micro vessels. So that is ideal for that. He's Dr. Servus Navarro. He worked in Berlin on Humboldt Foundation and I learned a lot about electron microscopy. Regarding Arkansas, I have long love with Arkansas, that's why I'm here. Working almost 15 years, I and mean, time goes very fast. And uh, USFDA, <coughs> Little Rock, and in 2004, I started working from USFDA with Dr. Grace Licker, and I was uh, lucky that they recognized some of our work, and I'm very proud. Then we did this book after getting knowledge from Dr. Bill Slicker, I have a friend Dr. Saeed Ali and also uh, people from uh, US Air Force Research Laboratory, Dr. Saeed Hussain and Dr. Schlager, they introduced us to the nanoparticles and try to understand nanoparticle effects on the problem barrier. So we did some work and uh, this progress in brain research in 2009. Then, Arkansas government is supporting at that time our research and this is the former governor and also at that time uh, my PD was very supportive of, of our nanoparticle research apart from political affiliations, Democrat or Republican, <laughs> well. This is Dr. Bill Slicker, he is still director of uh, NCTR and we have worked a lot with RCI, you might be knowing, right here. 
So, we understand that uh, the Alzheimer's disease or even Parkinson's disease is very frequent in our veterans who leave the active military duties and sometimes also during the active time period they get traumatic brain injury and that can aggravate or initiate the basic points that can develop Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease. That is one of the biggest problems in that. And as you can see that uh, that's why we have done some basic works. <coughs> According to normal survey uh, by US environmental agencies that we have high number of Alzheimer's cases in the United States, but this is not the story of the United States alone. In all of all the countries they have a problem with Alzheimer's disease. Since the US is very active in reporting data, we have the actual data, but some of the countries they are not that active, so we don't know in detail their data. The problem as a pathologist you can see that this is the normal human brain. But in case of Alzheimer's disease, you can see that some parts are missing here. This area is dilated and also this structure is changed. So this is a great change in the human brain of Alzheimer's disease that affects our day-to-day -day function, intellectual function and many vital functions and it is still difficult to treat. This one cartoon shows that here this is only mild cognitive impairment. This is the normal ventricles and this is the condition in mild cognitive impairment and this is the case in Alzheimer's disease. So you can see that almost all tissues are vanished and the ventricles are dilated. So these are the big problems and how to control that. The first thing of course the uh, diagnosis as early as possible but this is not all the case in human cases so we rely on therapeutic intervention. Here this is the normal healthy brain, brain and mild Alzheimer's disease, we have problems in hippocampus, that is the organ that is controlling our memory and vital functions. And here is uh, severe Alzheimer's disease cases, you can see the ventricles are dilated and the structural changes are quite obvious. Just showing you data that risk factor in military Alzheimer's disease, one of the important causes of neurodegenerative diseases. This is another showing that risk factor for Alzheimer's disease, traumatic brain injury, and even post-traumatic stress disorder. This is one of the important things when our veterans return from the active war zone, they have a problem of post-traumatic stress disorder. It is not physically seen, but there are so many mental and physiological problems, and so far we have no idea how to treat them or cope with them. This shows that amyloid pathology, this is one of the recent very interesting studies in 2018. People are talking about that whether Alzheimer and amyloid beta peptide is the cause or effect and there are many theories prevailing in this case. But this paper say, uh, says that amyloid pathology can be fingerprinted and therefore we can really distinguish among traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic stress disorder and mm -hmm. real Alzheimer's <coughs> disease. And that is a landmark paper published recently. i show you this example. So they have <coughs> using, uh, this is MRI I guess, and try to find out amyloid beta by So A is the Alzheimer's disease, B is traumatic brain injury, and this is the combination. The interesting point is that post-traumatic stress disorder, you can see that amyloid is everywhere than the simple case. And they have shown by this way, we can really fingerprint what kind of disease we have. More interestingly, you can see using another way here, this is the Alzheimer's traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress disorder. You can see that the position is very high in post-traumatic stress disorder. The question is whether amyloid is deposited everywhere in the brain or certain areas in the brain. That is 
very important. And this paper examined that even this frontal simulate that our stress brain, parietal, temporal, and occipital, normal PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder, traumatic brain injury, and traumatic brain injury plus post traumatic stress disorder. You can see that because it is entirely different from different areas. So this is quite complicated. <coughs> then a paper published in PNAS, you all are familiar with that. When we were thinking since 30 years that why do we have the position of MRI beta peptide in the brain? Some people say that probably it is due to slowing of efflux mechanism, means the brain is no longer to expel those peptides out in the CSF for metabolism. And that could be one of the basic factors. Well, this is partly true, but people are not thinking that even we have a stress, <coughs> Alzheimer disease whatsoever, the blood-brain barriers could be open and in normal human plasma we have any blood. Why not it can go from blood to blood? <coughs> this was one of the examples and they showed that this factor, we demonstrated that depletion of blood plasma in the is sufficient to protect against both in a immune cell activation in the brain and Alzheimer's disease pathology in a mouse model. So this is a landmark thing that we can have Alzheimer from the blood factor. <coughs> They almost forgot this data from University of Maastricht. A mild uh, Alzheimer disease brain show leakage of serum algae in 1968. But they did not find any evidence or the paper has gone missing from the literature. But this is very important. One of the earliest findings that blood borne substances can enter into the brain in Alzheimer's disease. To prove our theory, probably this is the first example provided by us that this is albumin immunostaining in the brain of an Alzheimer mouse and here you can see the polish of albumin is clearly seen around the microvessels and also in the neurocal. And then the question of treatment. Since Alzheimer is multifactorial, <coughs> we can't use one drug or two drugs to control it. So we have used, of course we know that there is a decrease in neurotrophic factors, there is a decrease in many peptides and also up of many peptides. So this is one of the drugs called cerebrolysin. This is a multimodal drug because this is a commercial and balanced composition of different types of neurotrophic factors. Brain derived neurotrophic factors, glia derived neurotrophic factors, <coughs> ciliary derived neurotrophic factors and anti-peptide fragments. And even its clinical trial is going on in the United States in Alzheimer's disease. We have used the cerebrolysin and you can see that at least it is able to restore some of the permanent barrier disturbances. Then we did some biochemistry and you can see that we measured MRI beta and this is the Alzheimer's disease mice and we have given cerebrolysin and it was able to is it? Interestingly, we met Dr. Ryan Tian since 2006 and we started some of his model for drug therapy. So our idea is that uh, he should formulate the drugs and we use that. So whenever we have given nanowire cerebrolysin delivery, you can see that it's almost clear to control it. So we are excited. Not only that, this nano delivery makes the effect much better, also it lowers the dose of the drug. And cerebralizing is one of the expensive drugs in the world. So we should do this in this way. The other aspect of amyloid beta peptide is also associated with tau, that is phospholipidin. And this is also a very important disease. So we also measure this <coughs> tau. And you can see that the delivery of cerebralizing is the best in our hands. Then we use another model. We developed an uh, Alzheimer's disease like pathology. This is protocol, it's very standard. We inject an beta peptide 200 nanogram, 30 micrometer every day, intracerebral ventricularly for four weeks. And this has very similar to Alzheimer's like conditions in the body, both physiologically and pathologically. The point is that since we have funds from different aspects <coughs> using US military and also uh, Department of Defense, we wanted to 
mimic the effect of traumatic brain injury and see in this model whether we have upregulated or exacerbated amyloid effect. So this was the model we have used. I will show you another sample. I come back. We have a model of head injury, of course in this case rats, a weight of 114.6 grams was dropped over the parietal port, you see, parietal skull, and the skull is not fractured. It gave uh, a 0.2 to 4 meter impact. This is called moderate uh, concussive head injury. It's not CP. And then we have used this annual beta fusion model. This model showing neuronal changes in both uh, injured right and uninjured left side. Since this produces a counter to mechanism, it is not surprising me to see that uninjured left side is more damaging than the impact side. And this is well known to many neurosurgeons and even in military cases. <coughs> Regarding the data we have on head injury, this is one of the most complicated data and most vulnerable group is military person. And here you can see that the data that I am having at the moment from them until 2000 to 12, 2012, 12 years, we have more than 244,000 cases of head injury also penetrating, <coughs> severe, moderate, mild, and some of them are not classified. Of course, we have difference between male and female and different age groups. So this is one of the key problems in military and also in civilians. A motorbike accident, fall, etc. This data shows that concussive head injury causes brain dysfunction and alter our network for working memory and planning. So everything suffers if we have moderate or even mild head injury. Even the symptoms are not clear, but they are affecting most of the brain function. So we advocate this editorial that this is time to use nano <coughs> drugs for using the negative. Nowadays people are also using nanowire technology to stem cells because in this condition they live longer and have better effect. So we, we use also uh, we use kind of stem cells because there are many reports that stem cells can <coughs> also uh, influence superior neural protection of any drug. Actually the nanowires were was discovered by Dr. Kodonyam from Mr. 50, but he discovered for electronic purposes. Dr. Rantian is using for biological purposes. So this is my long time friend. Ah okay. <laughs> So these are the uh, nanowires from Dr. Tian, and also uh, Dr. Asia was using this uh, Ethernet nanospheres to put drugs inside, and we have some good papers. And we met Dr. Ryan Tian earlier. This was on one of the occasion of the Congress, and this is Dr. Ryan. So there are literature that even the stem cells when nanowired, they live longer and it is already proven. So making long story short, I show you some of the examples here that uh, this table showing data. This is weapon barrier breakdown, we use radioiodine leakage, brain edema. When there is a leakage to protein inside the brain, the, brain, uh, the protein enters into the brain, produces uh, brain edema and swelling and then we have neural injury and the right beta peptide deposits and major urban barrier leakage also confirmed by number of elements. And the right beta peptide infusion means AD model has increased these parameters in all the cases. When we had traumatic brain injury, they were further enhanced brain edema, neuronal injury, and the right beta peptide deposit and number of elements. When we have given nanowire cerebralizin, then the values are significantly reduced. Even they were able to reduce after traumatic brain injury, all the values. We have given nano delivery of medium-time stem cells. The values are reduced. 
also after traumatic brain injury, but may not be that better at cerebralizing alone. But when we have combined these things, you can see the values were considerably reduced, means both each other enhance the neural protection. <coughs> Histological proof is here untreated. The implantable stem cells alone, cerebralizing nanowire alone, and the combination gives healthy neurons much more better and compact neurons. Then we also understand Neprilysin is an enzyme normally found in the brain and it is decreased in cases of traumatic brain injury and also some neurodegenerative diseases. So one theory is that probably if we exogenously infuse Neprilysin, can we get neuroprotection? <coughs> Neprilysin, this is Neprilysin, it is matching with amyloid with the peptide but not with uh, astrocytes. This is the real fibrillin uh, the protein, the measure of astrocytes. Well, I'll just show you this table again, the same thing. This is better than very probability to advance blue and iodine. Brain water contains adeno formation, volume swelling, amyloid <coughs> deposit, albumin, and even an injury. This is control. And this is amyloid beta peptide infusion. You can see the values are highly increased in all the parameters. Nanowire cerebralizing plus amyloid beta peptide infusion, the values are reduced. But when we have combined nanowire cerebralizing, nanowire neutralizing, and amyloid beta peptide infusion, we have further reduced these numbers. Means exogenous infusion of neutralizing also enhances cerebralizing infusion. The proof that we have is, this is the example of traumatic brain injury and Alzheimer's disease, hippocampus, many cells are damaged. When we have cerebralizing alone, some cells were very nice, but the combination with neutralizing is even better. So we feel that combination therapy could be very good in treating neurodegenerative diseases. We must understand its significance. But here I should give you a word of caution because we are investigating many nano delivery of drugs in different kinds, and this is the homing analysis done by many drug companies. So, this compartment is the best compartment, this compartment is the worst, and as you can see, that this drug in, lies in this compartment after spinal cord injury. Whereas after a spinal cord injury, some of the drugs are in this compartment, means they are not in the top. But some of the drugs, nano delivery, they are in between. So means that we have to choose our drugs very carefully. Only those drugs they are having good effects can have better effects when they are delivered with nano uh, technology. Otherwise, a bad drug cannot be made, made good if we use nano uh, delivery. Still we are working, we don't know how nano delivery can have better effects than the normal drug. And this cartoon shows that this is nano walk, level with drugs. They can enter into the brain, making tiny hole in the endothelial cells of the brain, no damage, and they can release their substances either extracellular or intracellular and they can stay for a longer time. And since they are bound to nano wires, maybe they are also less catabolized in short time. <coughs> to test our technology, we have applied some of the technology to National Innovation Summit and Showcase in this year. <coughs> this is happening in Boston next month from 17 to 19 June. We, we feel that we have some innovation with Dr. Tian, we applied. <coughs> and this was in 2013 when we have used for neuropathic pain. It was uh, considered top 20% technology of that year. And there were some, uh, you know, public relation. This was also this. My wife submitted some technological advances in 2017, and she was awarded with top 15% technology together with uh, Romania, 
United States, and this is related to the stock 25, top 15 percent of technology about. This was the certification. And even in 2018, we, we got this uh, technology always in the and the jury were from various organizations, you know better. So we understand that this is rigorously innovated and we are very happy mm -hmm. on our material. In 2019, we have three innovations accepted. Not a lot, but innovation accepted. And this is also an delivery of uh, drugs to treat neurodegenerative diseases. <coughs> and even one from last brain injury. <coughs> we are happy that several times we have our nice session on nanotechnological advances in Society for Neuroscience. This was from last year. We have 12 uh, presentations with Dr. Lantian and others. This book is recently uh, released in the market. This is Nano Neuroprotection and Nano Neurotoxicology. <coughs> My wife and I have edited. We have chapters from various organizations. So we are able to show that uh, our method is working and promoting research in other areas as well. This was by Nanotechnological Advances from Springer last year. And also this book was also in 2018 by Nanomedicine. So we believe that uh, nano delivery could be one of the key you know, factor in enhancing neuro recovery in various diseases and we are continuing to work on this area. So of course we have some governmental support, this is our uh, Swedish uh, Prime Minister who supported our work. Various uh, Nobel laureates, this is Dr. Aaron Shikanova, is uh, suggesting that our work is in a good direction. We are working with Dr. Shelley, he has small peptide fragments and we are then delivering them to understand new ideas. This is Dr. Proto also knows right in chemistry. So we are working with them and we are happy. And regarding antibiotics, today uh, Dr. Tian uh, told me that uh, whether we have antibiotics. Because this is Dr. Uh, Ada Yonas, he got Nobel Prize you know, on antibiotics. So we are also using nano delivery of antibiotics in antibiotic resistant cases and I don't have uh, at this time reserved permission to discuss with you but these are the lines we are taking and now this one uh, Dr. Sia mentioned me and Dr. Tian today that they have developed nanofibers that is uh, their uh, magnetic properties. In this case one of the top paper published when they have used this um, uh, hydrocortisone nanogel and also this magnetic nanofibers for spine cord injury. The good thing is that, that you can use external magnet to deliver or pinpoint your drug at the point of the target. And this paper was now very much cited. So these are the main areas that we would like to work with Dr. Tian. And also uh, Chinese government is very much interested and we are working with some traditional Chinese drugs I don't have time to show you here. From Xi Jiajuan, this is in the hospital. And also this is Golden Military Hospital in Marvin. So we believe that nanomedicine is the need of the hour, but neurotoxicity of nanomaterials must be investigated in detail. And most of the experiments, if we don't do in vivo, I mean in vitro results can give some important information, but uh, vivo experiments must be done before we can go further in this area. And these research are funded by various organizations. I will not take the time. These are our funding agencies, our collaborators, and I am from Uppsala University. Thank you very much for your time and listening. I look forward to your questions and comments. Thank you very much.